Hey guys, how you doing? It's Tony here, and uh, we got a build change pace a little bit. This is Patrician Four. Now, this is you could say kind of like CK Two Republic, because you do have to get known, have a lot of money, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah to gain up in ranks and move up and up and up in the world. But mostly, this is all about trade. This is basically conquest through trade. You do get a little bit of fighting, like some ship battles, but that's about it. And um, I've been playing this a lot recently. I mean, I brought it a few days ago and I've already gotten like six hours on it. Something like that. <laughs> I have really been playing it quite a bit. I haven't played Rise of a Dynasty a lot, which is what we're on now. All that has, I think, is some improved uh, GUI features and some other kind of stuff but um, yeah I mean it is a good game I would recommend you buy it if you like uh, trade games where you don't have to necessarily go to war to gain prestige and whatnot <clears throat> so we are going to go on free play there is a campaign but that's to learn how to learn how to play this game but uh, if you get a, if it gets a good review because I know most of you guys have sub me from war type games such as Martin Blade, the Floris mod pack that I did. I know I got a huge amount of you from that. Uh, probably some from Crusader Kings and then other type games such as Total War and whatnot like that. <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys will enjoy this as much but I'm going to try and make it as enjoyable as possible and if you guys have any recommendations then go ahead and throw them away. But quite literally, this is we completely different. Like, completely. This is. Yeah. <laughs> right, and our family name shall be. Should be Palites. Random name, I know. <laughs> we should have that SR. Coat of arms. Oh. We should be this guy because he looks awesome with his freaking mustache. Look at that shit. Got like an Italian mustache going on. Uh, I normally start off in the back because there are some. They it produces a crap ton of salt, and then somewhere else along the lines needs a crap ton of salt, so we can sell salt from the back to there and get all sorts of things. I'm going to say the maximum number of cities. Keep it on normal because I haven't really played it a lot, a lot to rank it up. I don't even know what happens. The higher the level of difficulty, the lower the profit to be made on goods. So basically. Competition becomes more aggressive, and they will erect many businesses to try and stop yours. And basically, you won't make as much money as you normally would. We we're going to go to two thousand five hundred. Don't know why. Seems like a nice number. And we're going to start game. <laughs> so at first, you uh, at first, at first. Okay, let, let me just pause it here. No, I'll speed that up, my bad. So, so to start out with, you're in a town. You know, you can you can change a view of it, so you can get nice if you like. <coughs> oh god, it's not changing. Okay, so you can change it a little bit like that, but it flicks back. So yeah, so we're in this town. As you can see, all of this area out here can be built upon. All of it. Now, I haven't actually seen someone fill it all up. <laughs> I would imagine that'd be quite ridiculous. But you have your main part here. You have your minister where you can donate stuff, meal for the poor, pray, and all that. And that just makes it so that I think pray just boosts up the percentage. If you did it for family, I think it increases the percentage of either how well your family is known or the chances of your wife getting pregnant. But that's later on. And then for the business is... I think it increases the profits you make or the price you can sell your stuff at. Meal for the poor is just simply to make them like you, I suppose. And donate is to also make it nice. If we donate 100, as you can see, this bar up here, well, not buy this percentage, it's going up and up and up. <clears throat> but I don't want to do it too much now. <laughs> we, we, we already gave them 700. That will go down gradually over time. But this is just a reputation with the city. 
Now what you do with the reputation is that you can get privileges. So you have the right to build one counting house and houses in Lubeck. What this basically means is that I have a counting house, which is this. Which is basically my home. So, you know, we are, um, you have been represented in this city since 1st of April, 1370. Which hasn't changed at all. You are not married, so we have no family at the moment. Your home is the city... Your home city is Lebec, so you can move to other, country, uh, other countries, other cities as well. This is your balance, basically your income, your expenditures, blah de blah de blah, and then your buildings. Your administrator, which we actually will hire right now, is a guy that you can tell to do what you like. So, you know, you can tend to sell the goods. So if you have some goods that you want to sell at this city, then you can tell him to sell them at a certain price and how many he should sell. Then you've got your purchase of goods, which you can tell him what in a city you want to be purchased into your storage, into your warehouse. We don't need no guards at the moment because we technically haven't got any feuds with any of the family members. Which is basically um, the burgers. And then of course you've got your own warehouse, which is 1,000 slots, storage space required, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. You know pretty much what, what that probably means. Goods, you have your stuff all the way down here. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that you can buy and purchase, but can't buy it from here. This is just where it's stored. Now, to tell you about these things here, just to get out of the way, this is what the city produces. So this city of Lubeck produces grain, hemp, uh, salt, also produces some beer. And I believe that's it. Yeah, that's it. And they really do produce a ton of salt. I mean, if we go into a list of goods... Actually, I should really explain this, but this is the market hall. <laughs> this is where you buy stuff. So you can either buy it into your storage, or if you have a fleet that is selected, that is signified by the blue flag on top of the ship, you can then send from Lubeck, from the trade market, to the convoy. And that's how much space it actually has. So as you can see, there's all different manner of prices. These green, these stars here, is signifies how much they actually have. But if they produce it and they're producing a lot of it, then it will have two stars by it, such as salt. But we can actually look at how much they produce. So the city of Lebrecht produces 560 salt. That's actually kind of strange because in my single player mode, it actually produces about 720. Then again, I play on um, 3,000 people, so I'm taking it that there's probably more businesses that produce all of it and bloody blood. Well, you can also see what it produces here. Oh, and it also produces metal goods. Fair enough. This is how many businesses it has. Of course, if a city has less businesses, then it'll be easy for you to make more money, but it'll also be harder to make the prosperity go up. And these guys do have a ton of prosperity. And their workers are working harder than they normally would. And of course, there's so much they'd like us by. Size is simply how many houses there are, how many inhabitants, uh, poor burgers, uh, well-to-do burgers, and rich burgers. I don't know how you kind of pronounce that, actually. Because I'm pronouncing it burgers. <laughs> and then you've got your housing occupancy. Uh, housing occupancy. Basically meaning how much of the houses are full. So 59%. Or 49 houses are full. And really that's the basics of the market hall. I mean you can't. This is what you buy them for. And when you buy them. It goes up in price after a short while. Then of course when you sell them. It also goes down in price. Of how much you get from them. Architect to build buildings. Simply you can only build the buildings. That are already being produced here. I think you can get a, like a, I don't know, a um, university where you can research the buildings, but that's about it. And the houses, you can buy these and these bring in rent and of course other stuff from the tenants that live there. They cost 21000 which is a bit expensive right now, so we won't buy one of those. Warehouses, if you're buying a ton of goods, and I mean a ton, like it produces 1000 extra space for you. And you need more space. Uh, city is where you can build these odd little things. So if you want to um, build up the prosperity of the burgers living in the vicinity. So you could have a big clump of houses. 
and this could be in the, like directly smack bang in the middle and then that will increase the prosperity of them the large well is just decreases the risk from fire and disease and all that kind of stuff same from the small well it just decreases it a little bit more mayor if you're elected mayor then you can build certain things so you can build a guard tower armed with a crossbow can be upgraded to a repeating crossbow or longbow so this will protect you if you get attacked by pirates i believe uh convent school of course increases the influx of beggars um infirmary <clears throat> Reduces likelihood of an outbreak of disease. Security is highest when there is one hospital per 3,000 citizens. So with 3,000 citizens, you want one of those. Mint increases the number of well-to-do and rich in a city. So, yeah, just increases that. And then you've got all these other things that I'll allow you to read. And all that. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. You can't actually run... For mayor yet, this is the city hall. You can, um, because to get on a city council, you need at least a rank of merchant before you can access information on city council projects. So when we rank up once, we'll come back to this and we'll be able to see what the city is building. <clears throat> you can run for election, but of course there are other practitioners here and all these other type of people here. Because you've got a patrician, which I think is the highest rank but I'm not sure. You've got Bricklayer, Naka, Goldsmith, and then there's me a grocer, which is a lowest rank. And of course this guy here is loved by this town, so he's the mayor, I do believe. The honourable oh no wait, he isn't the mayor, he is but he's disliked rather, so he this guy up here, if he runs for mayor, he'll most likely get it. This here is uh you can set up patrols, convoys for harbour defence, so if you don't want to get attacked by pirates, you can do that. Um, this is what the person is serving today, which I don't understand how that's useful. So I guess you can change that when you're mayor and just make the people like you more. Tavern, of course, you get sailors, which you can hire if you have warships and cannons on them so they can operate the cannons faster. Guests, you can buy treasure maps. That's kind of cheap. I'll buy that later. Pirates. If you're high enough in the guild, they will send you out to kill pirates and whatnot. But that's the battle. And a shipyard where you can construction order. So you can ask <clears throat> if any if the guy can construct any one of these. And of course you have your total cost for how much you have to pay. And then the raw resources, mater uh, materials that are required. You can buy. So if someone's just sold their ship and you can simply straight up buy it without waiting for it to be constructed you can sell uh, your things so you, I could sell my cog for 19 grand but I don't think I will because then I can't trade you can upgrade so that they have more cannons but they get less infantry space <clears throat> so that is the gist of it that is very much the gist of it so I will actually have to put in a tie a um, thing in for you guys. So you don't, if you don't want to learn all this, then you can skip straight to about now. And this is where we're going to start stuff. So hi, welcome. If you have skipped, <laughs> and uh, let's have a look then. So we have a cog. This can get five uh, five hundred. So if I'm not mistaken, then these guys appear need quite a lot of um, salt. So I'm just going to send my ship all the way up there. We can of course now speed up time. <clears throat> it does go up to times 5 speed, but if you press the space bar, then it goes times 10. Oh, and then of course you get these odd things here that you find people in water. <clears throat> and then it tells you where they came from. So you can go drop them off at Bergen. Wherever the hell that is. Don't even know where Bergen is. That is Bergen. Oh, right up there. Okay, we're going to drop them off for stocking. You do get a thousand gold for dropping them off in the right place, but uh, yeah, I don't really want to go up there right now. So this is, of course, Stockholm. And we can have a look at all their different types of things. We can actually join their guild if... Oh, that wasn't a guild. Where was the guild? There is. We can actually join their guild if we wanted to, but we need a higher rank. Uh, this is their market hall and how much they actually use. So, yeah. So, of course, these guys use up a short ton of hemp. 
so we might want to be buying that and then as well as salt so they use up 313 salt which is quite a lot of salt <laughs> but uh, I guess we can uh, do that so that's hemp and salt so if we go back out here do that and then we can go onto our counting house and onto our administrator where we can say to him, alright, purchase uh, hemp. How much is hemp being sold at for a moment? 39. We'll probably go up to about 50. Yeah, we go up to 50. So if we go on here, go on here. We go on here and then we say, okay, we want to buy at least 100 of them for 50. You don't want to buy the maximum amount and then transport 250 hemp and 250 salt over there because otherwise they will um, dry up quickly. Not dry up, but they will pay you less the more you deliver. And then of course we want him to also buy some salt, which will be also 100. And then this, how much is this sold for in the market? So for 69, here, here, here. <laughs> And then we'll probably go up to about 71. <clears throat> so then we can go here, trade mode, buy, yes, uh, for at least 71. Boom. So now we've got that done. Our ship should be here soon. Wherever he is. Ah, right, there he is. So of course now it is enables us to do a trade route. I should probably explain this as well. So basically this is your ship list. You can have up to six ships within your fleet. Right here we've got one which is this cog. And then you got of course your health what well, convoy condition, which means if it gets under attack or if it's out of the sea too long it takes some damage from waves and whatnot like that. And you got your speed, so you got six knots. You got your storage base. You got where it's anchored at or where it's going if it's blue. Then additional sailors is how many sailors you have, and then armaments how many cannons you have. This is where all your stock is held. So as soon as we set up an automatic trade route, then we can see that in there. You got the captain. So this guy is twenty coins per day. He's had no naval battles. He has one combat experience, one navigational experience, and one repair experience. And of course, these can go up. You can train in the tavern if I show you here. This guy here will train our trader. So if we do that, then his trade has gone up by one point. I'm not quite sure what it does. I think it increases how much profit you make, but don't take my word on that. Then this is what we're going to do. We're going to, this is our trade route. So we can set up a new trade route where we can say, right, we want to go from Lebec all the way up to Stockholm. And then at Lebec, <clears throat> we want to take the sugar that we bought from right, up to load. And then we want to take a hundred from it. Pretty simple. We also want to do the same with our hemp. So we want to go to that, load up 100 hemp, and then it will load up 100 hemp when it's here. And then what we want it to do is we want it to go to Stockholm. And then, of course, we, we want to, get to sell the hemp and sugar. Uh, unload. Unload into, oh, well, to sell the city, 100 and 100 sugar so I keep on saying that sugar <laughs> and then we want to sell that for at least uh, 80 probably yeah 80 and then this normally sells about 105 so this is what it will do so what we're doing is we're going from here <clears throat> we're loading up a hundred of each when we brought it and then of course Stockholm we're unloading it and we're selling it to the city and we're selling it for the minimum of 66 gold price. I would like that to go higher, but I don't think it will. Oh, let's see. God damn it. <laughs> Without 
Because okay, it did say if I could. So yeah, and it will unload all this and settle for that map. But that's the basics. <clears throat> and then of course, if our guy has actually brought any, we we'll wait for him to buy that last pile of hemp. So of course, as you can see, it's automatically brought it, which it probably just did then as well. So now we've got a maximum of 100. So now we can say, okay, ship on your way. And then it's on its way. <clears throat> it will do this automatically. So it'll go up to there, come back, buy it again, go up there, back, sell. And then as you will soon see, it's also brought another 100 of each, as you will see. And there we go. We just made 10K from all that. And we spent about probably... 4k 5k the most I would reckon <clears throat> but of course hemp isn't produced regularly so if oh why did it take a hundred why did it take a hundred it shouldn't have took a hundred <laughs> I mean 170 at least that must have been that must have been the ones I didn't sell. So if you see up here, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but Nero. And then it'll sell it, but of course they're not buying hemp right now. So I guess we can simply... <clears throat> we could probably actually remove that. If we remove that from both, then it'll just ignore it. And from now on, it will only pick up the uh, salt. Oh, to explain it, this is where it's going to. So it's going to Lebec. And it will be here in 0.8. I don't know what that means. I think it means like 0.8 days. or So it basically means almost a day. <clears throat> we want to deactivate this for now, though. Because we do want it to come back so we can drop off all this hemp. We're probably just going to resell it. If not, we'll just simply um <coughs> we'll just simply keep it in our storehouse. So we'll go to we have to click on our ship. No, not double click. And then click on this, and then we're going to say convoy to storage by pressing this button. And we're going to say put all that back in there because we don't want it. We only want to buy this. So if we activate it again, what we set it to now is to only pick up the salt. So as soon as it, there we go, it picks up the salt. So you want to do that in reasonably small deliveries because otherwise, if you deliver all 500 to it, then this is going to fill up so quickly that it's going to start paying you less and less and they won't have a chance to use it up. Because if we wait until it actually gets to it, if we speed it up a lot, you also get these historical events and entries in your chronicle. I don't really pay much attention to it. It just tells you who gets elected um, and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's been there. <clears throat> If we just bring it back very quickly, it's also I've cancelled it, but I know that. If we look at it again, as I got, as I showed you guys, it uses up a moderately large amount of hemp. The thing is, it also produces it, but other people are also selling it. So, yeah. Plus, we are selling it for quite a bit, so it probably doesn't all get sold very quickly. That's probably the reason, actually. Hmm. Because it wouldn't make much sense if I brought it for more than what it already is. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but as I was showing you guys, it uses up about 313 salt. But, of course, it doesn't actually make any. So, they are actually going to want to buy this more. And for more prices, of course. So, if we reactivate it. <clears throat> and then it'll go on its merry way. Now we're just gonna let this run for a while. We'll have a look. So yeah. 
As you can see, all this DLC does is literally just, yeah, just it, it improves it GUI. So you can see that there's all these. If you play the one that isn't a DLC, the uh, Trade Ever Conquest, oh, I mean Conquest Through Trade, then this won't be here. There, there will be trees, but they won't be so textured like this. <laughs> <clears throat> and also these won't look like this and all kinds of things. I don't know exactly what it adds, but I know that it improves how it looks. So our counting house is still going good. Actually, did I cancel that? I did not. God damn it. <clears throat> so we're buying for a maximum of 71 gold, but we're sending for 105. So we are making a 34 gold profit from selling it, if we sell it all. <clears throat> and then of course it's going there, selling it, coming back, selling it, doing all this kind of stuff. So I think it might be time that we need another ship. Might get this one, but then again it is only 200, but it does have good speed. You got another historical event there. Don't actually know how to view the historical event, but I think it's added to your chronicle. I just. <laughs> Kids in Hamburg have created the first water bombs using pig bladder filled with water to bombard the beggars on the marketplace. Lovely. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's also other stuff. You can also get missions from these people. So if you go to here, they might have a mission for you. Actually, I think we are soon going to go up in rank. So hopefully that will happen next. And this is what it really is. I mean, I could actually technically buy a house. <clears throat> I think the the uh, more higher ranked you are, the less it costs. But I'm not entirely sure about that. That will set it there. Very good. So we might want to start construction more stuff. Oh, go away, that happens so regularly as well. <laughs> but this is what it mainly is at first. I feel like I need to probably increase it to about 200. So if we go into trade goods by 200, still the same max. And then we want to. Where's our, where's our ship? Oh, that's wrong. Okay, no, yeah, there you go. So if we change this, if we edit the route, then we can go to here and then simply say, when you're loading up, just pick up 200 of them instead. And then when you're at Stockholm and you're unloading them, simply do the same and sell 200 instead. This will just increase how far we get along very much, a lot quicker, I must say. <clears throat> Tempted to buy a house. We can also donate, so I think we'll do that as well. You want to donate quite a bit. We also might want to pray for our business because we don't have a family yet. So there won't be much point in that. And then you can go to the guild, but we have to rank up first, which we should be doing soon. We only have to do a bit more. We had to sell 7,000 more wealth. That's about it. <clears throat> and it should be at Stockholm soon. So hopefully that'll happen. There we go, see, we just made 40 grand. And we also went up. We are now a trader. So we got promoted to a trader. What also this means is that we get more missions, more stuff we can do. And most of all, we need...